Mm. Should really clean up the shop. I'm getting caught on everything. Ah, well, today I'm working on some sword parts. Remaking some katana fittings. Got the old fittings hermetically sealed in this plastic container so they don't get dirty or messed up. But this is the suka. Took all the wrapping and stuff off, just had this real synthetic ray skin. Got some nice real ray skin to put back on there. Got the old suba here, plus cast aluminum. Didn't even bother cleaning up the breakout here when they made it. Replaced that. Got the old Fuchi here. More cast aluminum. Doesn't even properly fit. Let's see what else we got in here. Uh, the old Kashida fits fairly well, but also cast aluminum. Didn't clean up the casting marks. Got the replacement here. Still needs finish. And of course, the old Ito. Just, I think, polyester and some shiny vinyl. And there's some Seppa down in there. Yeah, already got the Nutsuba basically made. Have a few things left to finish out on it. Nice rustic finish. Gonna go with a darker finish on the iron. Got a smoother finish for underneath. Compare that to the old one. Get it in focus. Less decorative, but you know. Really nice look, I think. This one also has a raised rim, unlike this one. Compare the two Fushi. No, the Gashira. Come on. Come on. Iron, aluminum. Should be a lot stronger with the new iron. And, ah, come on, come on, come on. Focus. The new Fuji part. It's brazed together. Don't have the hole cut out yet, but still working on it. I was testing some other parts. I had a silver soldered version. Wasn't too happy with. The silver solder is not quite as strong as the brazing was for me. Brazing was a lot stronger, so I went with that gonna turn out pretty nice so gonna get back to working on this okay, so I got my rotary tool all set up hung up on the ladder beside me to get some height can't see it it's over there though but I'm gonna need a carbide burr because I've got a good bit of brass probably can't see it in there but some leftover brazing I need to take out there you go so I'm gonna switch over to a carbide so I can take off a good bit of material without it taking me forever and this is just a rotary tool on a flex shaft from Grizzly it's been really really nice so far way better than a Dremel and Cost a lot less than a Fordham. I think it was like, I don't know, 
two hundred dollars or so, something like that. Uh, Fordham's like eight hundred, but you do need some height. You don't want to bind up the flex shaft a whole lot. But just trying to grind off the majority of the stuff without taking up all of it. You want to leave some structure. Bad thing about this thin steel is it gets real hot, real easy. I'm trying to use this to hold a little better. looking pretty good. Take it down a little bit more. side has a lot less but you know, might as well clean it up while I've got the rough cutting bit in there. Don't want to do a lot with the diamond. <laughs> flex shaft is bending at the bottom here, causing a little bit of heat. I'm going to move the motor base to the other side so it won't bend. If I don't pull it off the table. Or knock the camera on the ground. two complaints I have about this flex shaft is one, whenever you're you know, getting up in your grinding, sometimes, you know, hit your hand or your finger on this Jacob's chuck here with the, the gearing and you know, 
kind of uncomfortable. Burning your hand a bit. Hitting it. And then this gets a bit hot. But probably because we're not hanging up the, the motor like we should. It's supposed to be hanging up above your head you know, on your bench, but don't have it hanging yet. Moving around a bit. Alright, so the idea with this bit is it'll go around the inside and get a nice radius on this brass from the brazing. That way it has a good bit of contact, keep it together, but it's all cleaned up. And it'll sit nice and flush on the handle. Let's go ahead and do that. I wish I had a little carbide or high speed steel nib for this. Hang on one second, I'm gonna go look, look for one. Okay, found a burr. I think it's high speed steel. It's smaller than the diamond, but no. I was thinking about switching to a smaller one anyway. Should cut a lot faster anyways. Switch her out. Alright. Let's try this out. like it's working. This is just going to take a little while to clean up, so I'll be back when that's done. Okay, so I got the inside all cleaned up for the most part. And the bead blaster now. I'm going to blast the inside and get it all smoothed out and even so we can see if I have any more to take off. Uh, it's going to be loud in just a second. I'm going to run the vacuum to keep the dust down in there. It's looking pretty good. You can see most of the... It's mostly smooth in there. It just got some little extra little bits to clean up. Okay. Back to the bench. Alright, so I went back and Used the burr on it again, cleaned up any stepping that I saw, bead blasted some more, and I went ahead and etched it to get a closer look at it. it looks pretty good. All the stepping's gone. I'm gonna start to grind the outside a bit. This is a 120 grit belt. And then go nice and slow.
switch your position a bit. You can see. This is fairly thin metal, so we're trying not to sand too much, but enough. debating on whether or not I want to try out a hammered finish on it. I think it might look nice. We'll see. Good. On to the next grit. This is a Scotch Bright finishing belt. It's a gray, which I think is a fine grit. I'm not exactly sure. I don't use it a whole lot. Should give a nice satin finish on this piece. It's looking pretty shiny for a satin. I went up to 400 grit before this belt. I'm probably going to bead blast this part before I patina it. Oopsie. I'm just trying to get a fairly even finish. Break the edges off a bit. Yeah, this part gets pretty slippery once it's shined up like this. Got to make sure not to drop it in the vacuum tube there. Next stage. 